<laughs> Hello and welcome to 605 at 605, and I am your host, Roman Josart, a.k.a. Rojo. This will be the official first episode and first season of 605 at 605. Um, so this is a show where we bring on special guests and we talk about the industry, where they came from, what they're doing, what got them into it, all of it. Um, and it's fun. We have a lot of fun here. We don't take ourselves too seriously. Uh, and to kick things off, we've got Jeff Davis and Roberta Griffin. And God, I'm so excited to dive into this episode. It was so fun to do this episode. Um, we did it a little out of order, um, but, you know, ah, God, I'm so excited to show this to you guys and the news that we're about to drop on you guys what's going on right now um for them and for us and within this industry uh so and this week we brought on special guest stephanie hensley from chances are productions um so without further ado here's the episode Roberta Griffin, uh, screenwriter for Demons Within, which is uh, something Roman and I will be uh, working on mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Your and script. I'm so about that. <laughs> yeah, we're excited to have you on the show and talking about it. Yeah, your script yeah. is, uh, it's terrifying. <laughs> yes. I've, I've seen a lot and read a lot of possession kind of films. I don't want to go a lot into it. I actually uh, don't want to give away too much at all, but this is a, a slow, honest burn in my opinion. It reminded me of kind of like James Wan, The Conjuring, or a little bit of like The Exorcist. Yep. yep. It, it starts off slow, and once it starts, you you can't stop it. What's the balls rolling? It it picks up momentum. Yeah. 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 yeah so I'm super. I was super excited to hook up with uh, Jeff, who we'll get to here in a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, reading the script, it, it's something I turn my lights on at night and. Uh, Aaron, who's a co-owner, my partner for Chances Are, she was the same way. She's like, I don't even know if I believe in this stuff, but this is something that it's even th scary. even though it's there's not a lot, you know, no nudity or anything crazy like that. I would I would worry about letting my my kid watch it because it's just something that without a lot of intensity, it's super intense. Like it, it's a great story. Thank you, thank you. What inspired? Actually, um, like what I, inspired that? Um. Well, uh, in our in my past, in my fi my family's past, we've uh, had a lot of experiences uh, with uh, ghosts, and um, uh, I, I think even my brother is dealing with an issue with a demon nurse. And 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 I say this in all honesty, um, the house when uh, we were all children, uh, my parents bought it was moved from one place to another and um, and settled there and that's when my parents bought the house and the neighbors when we uh, before we m moved in the neighbors were all looking inside the house and there was all this like these pentagrams and all this like creepy stuff wait in the house you moved like you moved it was already office. there Be yeah before Whoa. before we <laughs> <got> <laughs> nope. there, they, yeah <laughs> so we didn't know my dad didn't know any about it we just moved in and from day one when we started moving we started hearing things in the, the back bedroom which seems like the the central area it's just this long hallway i'm gonna and, ask is that the bedroom that you sent me a photo out of uh the one with the ghost behind me yeah uh that that's at my new home we're gonna we're I gonna plug to that it. we're gonna plug that photo in For the sure. in this but yeah, there's some there's some serious stuff, and I'm like, why is this? Why is she not on like any channel for ghosts right now? Because that's you cannot deny that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's so funny. I bring people in, I show them the picture, and I bring people in, and instantly they they like look back to see if if there's any possible way something behind me could have made that image, and it's just a blank wall. It was it's just crazy. I'll have to so send it weird. to you here in a little bit. Hell it's it's no. nuts. Uh, <laughs> So you kind of grew up with just multiple yeah. dimensions and realms that, that were known and around you. Yeah, hearing things. Uh, one time I got out of the shower and everybody was still asleep and I hear a music box playing and um, uh, I look everywhere and I can't find it. So like an uh, old school like antique music box? 
Yeah, like what? Like we're gonna have to find a way to plug that into the movie. <laughs> yeah. That's a cool little tidbit right there. That's an Easter egg right there. <laughs> and uh, there was one time when um, I was uh, I was sleeping and I woke up and. I kid you not, I saw this tall man in my um, room standing there. He was, like, pretty pretty pale, and he had long, like, stringy black hair. And uh, all I thought was, oh, my God, we're, we're being robbed. I mean, because he was, he was solid. He looked very real. And I remember I, um, like, jumped up on my hands and knees on my bed, and, and um, I was um, – gonna tell him you know please just take whatever you want just please don't hurt anybody and all I could get out of my mouth was who are you and he just like stepped backwards and I swear he just like faded away just dissolved I was I I was so like my adrenaline was just off the charts I was like so freaked and uh, how old were you when that happened I was probably, I was in my 20s. I was living, wow. uh, yeah, I was in my so 20s. So old enough that parents yeah. can't say, it. it's your <laughs> you, imagination. You knew what was real, what's not real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you weren't young, yeah. young. There was, there was another time where, and this is where I, I truly believe, um, I mean, it's just too much of a coincidence. I was, uh, my mom was watching my kids. I was a single mom for uh, most of my, my kids' lives, and uh, she was watching him. I got off of work and came to pick him up, and as she was walking me to the door, um, I looked behind her, and I saw this, this guy standing at my brother's door, and uh, he, he, like, looked at me. He was very, like, emaciated, and he had, like, this long, stringy, like, sweaty hair, and... Um, he had these bulging, like bloodshot eyes, and he had a hand on my brother's doorknob, and he looked at me like he had this expression, like I've been caught. And I looked at him, and I looked back at my mom, and I didn't say anything. I just. I'm gonna yeah. stop you for one yeah. second. You're at work. Yeah. <laughs> and there are many people in that room. They so they all know that you're you're batshit crazy with supernatural, right? Yeah. Like they're okay. I was just wondering, like, I, I don't want you to be, I don't want your coworkers. We don't want to be you like, on the spot. I don't want now. your coworkers to be like, what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, he's actually, the, uh, we've known each other since children, so. Oh well, there you oh, go. There you go. He knows her brother. Uh, he actually works here too, and he's had a lot of experiences uh, with my mom's house. What wow. area? So you're in California. Yep. What area? Uh, San Pedro, uh, right. I, 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 Sounds warm. Long That's long all we can think about. Sounds warm. <laughs> it's like long, like Long Beach area. Okay. Long, okay. Yeah, I'm just just south of Long Beach. I mean, the bridge just uh, uh, separates us. So the port. You had so, a ton of experiences as a kid of, of creepy a kid into adult creepy. I like, see things. Just like you, it's like your book. Dude, yeah. <laughs> I, I know. I talked to her about my book, and I was like, dude, she well, she was writing one, and her computer I, crashed I, and lost all of it, and I was like, dude, that's no. that's demons within. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. What made and you that, decide that, to tackle a possession story? Um, well, before we moved into that house, we were, it, it's, and I don't know if this really means anything, but my mom, she, we were all sitting, we were like little, I was probably like five years old and um we were all sitting just watching tv me and uh, my mom was on the couch and she was actually reading the book the exorcist oh okay and it's I funny my mom was up. not allowed to read that book until after yeah like my yeah. my grandma found it in my mom's room and was like nope <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not yeah <laughs> The movie, I know, it, it damaged me. <laughs> well, the book is apps is way more terrifying than the than the movie. They did it a great job, but the book went into so much. Well, and your imagination makes it so much yeah. more terrifying when you I read it. Heard. But there was one there was one part where she's reading or watching TV, and all, and I sit up, and I I start looking around, and my mom stops reading, and she asks, "What's wrong?" And I told her, "I smell throw up," and um. I was about five, five years old, 
and um yeah to notice that 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 smell that 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 description yeah. of the smell and and it creeped her out because it was right at the point where she was she was spitting a vomit or whatever at the priest and <sighs> so that done i would have stopped reading the book <laughs> <laughs> She had us all. It was, it was, I had a, I was the second to the youngest at the time. So there were, she had all us kids looking all over the place to see if maybe somebody threw up or whatever to try to find the source of it. And we never found anything, but. Wow. Yeah. So did, she, did she finish the book after that? Cause I think as a, I think I would have put it down after that. <laughs> that's, that's a little much. Yeah, um, I I don't really remember if she finished the book. She probably did, but I just remember <laughs> her her reaction and her rea her because her her reaction was like kind of stunned, and then I see her reaction and that scares me, and I I'm like almost ready to cry because she looks scared and I'm just this little kid and I'm looking at my mom looking scared and so. You know, it, so she just kind of downplayed it and made everybody look and and then uh no one threw up so life yeah. went on yeah <laughs> yeah so, so how how long did it take you to how long did it take you to, to come up with the story and then to actually go through the writing process um of of demons within yeah because there's a lot in that story yeah so, so how long a... was that from like concept to i'm done where we're at now yeah <laughs> I actually, I, um, I took some screen, I stumbled upon um, Screenwriting You uh, with Hal Crosman, and um, I had taken one of his classes, and uh, it was in, from that first class, my first uh, horror script uh, got optioned, got sold to a producer out in India, which I thought was cool. Was it made? Because it, well, I'm sorry. Was was, was it, it was it made? Yeah, was you it can produced? plug you can plug the name if you want. Even, oh like. yeah, it was made. Um, the original name for it was the Promise, and um, and uh, but he changed it to Odisio, which means uh, I want what I want. Um, in so to everyone everyone watching, Google that and you'll probably yeah, we'll find link it. Yeah, like we'll we'll That's find cool. we'll find all the information we can. So that was your first one you did that was horror. Um, I'm so I'm sorry. That was your first. Horror? That was the first horror script you did, like. Yeah. And someone yeah. from India picked it up. Like that's pretty. Yeah. That's so. What came after that? After that, um, I wrote another that um, uh, I haven't started marketing yet, and I plan to. And it's 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 kind of based on these two uh guy college guys that are into astral projection and, and uh, one kind of takes it, pushes it to the limits to the point where he loses his body. And um, he loses his body because he's doing so many bad things uh, with the astral projection. And, and the other guy is kind of, you know, the good guy and he has to make a deal with these demons or keepers of the astral planes and um, wow, that's uh, yeah. so you really yeah. like the whole uh um, so you like the, the, the paranormal the, yeah the, aspect. The, the, the spiritual yeah, aspect of paranormal yeah. like the the good versus evil aspect of it yeah yeah and um it's i titled it silver thread because of the um they say that you have like this when you go into astral projection projection you have like this almost like an umbilical cord that uh, um like it like that attaches you are physical body. Yeah, it attaches you to yeah, your so astro plane. And that way you don't lose your your tether. It tethers you, yeah. anchors you back. Yeah. And that's when, um, you know, to to get rid of the bad guy, the good guy severs his... Uh, that sounds like um, a Terry thread. Gilliam that's feel. Cool. That sounds like a Terry yeah, Gilliam feel. Cool. So if Terry Gilliam watches this this <laughs> episode, that that's who needs to look into that. Because that's a total... Well, well, was that optioned out? Was that produced? No, I haven't. I haven't really started marketing it. Uh, yeah, yet. that's Actually, a Twelve Monkeys kind of twist yeah, on that. Cool. Like I see a Terry Gilliam spin on that one. Like, well, I could all uh, send it to you and see what you think. But well, send it to us, not the not the viewers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll send it to you. Just us. The, view, the viewers have to wait. So, okay. Demons Within. You met Jeff on on LinkedIn. Yeah. What happened was I went back into. Uh, uh, screenwriting you came up with a uh, screenwriting uh, master's class so I went in it was an 18-month program 
and uh, it took it taught you everything from you know the actual screenwriting, the formatting, into going into the marketing end of it. And um, I, since uh, paranormal is my my genre, I um, went ahead and uh, decided, okay, I'm going to do something with with possession, and um, also. Uh, the reason the cell phone be became involved is because um, I was talking to Jeff one day about how my cell phone sometimes it'll just like dial randomly. Or I think uh, I think it's a great. It happens to everybody. I, and I think yeah. it's yeah. a great make and you I, make I you think thing. Yeah, my phone's possessed. I swear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Um, we all joke about it. The only film I've seen even remotely close, I want to say, it was 1996. It was Edward Floring, and it was a brain brain damage, and it was a video game that he played. That what was Pulse about? Remember Pulse? Pulse was a sound. Sound, but yeah, yeah. But it, but ninety six. I it was and it was like their take on a, a ghost in the machine almost. Mm -hmm. But it yeah. it gets dropped so much, and I was always like, why doesn't Hollywood pick it up with technology and, and everything going on in the world? Like, exactly. you think about it, like, like yeah, it's like, our new normal. So why not incorporate? Well, it? yeah. If <laughs> a, if a demon wants to break you, a demon wants to break you down. They can just. Sh yeah show you as having zero friends on Facebook or Twitter, and, and that's going to hit your self-esteem. Like, it's going to take you... Well, that's all we care about nowadays, well, is how many status. friends and how yeah. many likes. Yeah. So, yeah, about. I was super excited when I saw that you brought that realm of, of communication into it again, because it's not mm -hmm. been done in... Not enough. God, over a decade, I'd say maybe two films that I've... That have I'd say fit. the last thing I can remember that used technology was... Uh, un was it Unfriended? That you Skype. Unfriended, but it was Skype, and it that was, was and that was, was a little call. bit. And that that's was a like, bit but that's like the only other thing that even comes remotely close. Yeah, that I can think of in the last. And then decade. her her story goes <laughs> this way. Exactly, it's not the same thing so. at all. Just you know, concept. -wise. It's just it's not done yeah. enough, and it's shocking that it's not in, in Hollywood and filmmaking yeah. because it is social media is so predominant. I think it's and gonna become a new it. sub genre for sure. It will over time. Well, good. We'll get on the front of it. That's right. I think that's Stephen King. Stephen King, Cell. Yeah. Interesting and, um, thing. So, I read the book. I watched the film. The book is absolutely fucking amazing. And yes, you can. You can. King, yes, yeah. you can say fuck on this show. Probably not at work, but we can yeah. say it here. <laughs> the book is fucking astounding with with everything. The film. How do you fuck up a film with John Cusack and Samuel Jackson? I don't know, but they I, did. Yeah, I heard. I haven't seen it, but I. So, uh, that's what I. Interesting. You as, a, you as a writer. How do you feel about a director taking your script and you know making like Jeff in this case with the <laughs> demons within? You know what? I, we're that's interested to hear my, how that my feels. One, it's like I tell. I'm like, I don't want anybody. He he, the uh, producer that bought the script. Uh, the main character was supposed to be a woman, a very strong woman at that. And uh, this is the India film, correct? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, Promise. He, yeah, he switched it around to make him the main character. Of and, course. Uh, and her. Actor, was, directors. No offense, the, Jeff. This is it, it just. I was so bummed when I saw it. I just. It's like why? Why buy a script? If you're gonna change, if you're everything. gonna change it, like if it's not yeah. what the story that you were looking for, then why even spend the money? Well, and yeah, because some things have to be changed on the fly. Like, yeah. hey, we don't yeah. have this location, yeah. or we don't have this time but frame. Actual but actual plot details, plot I don't details. understand. Why? Why get it if you didn't like it? I uh, yeah, I just. It, I sat there and I watched it, and I said, I am not going to allow anybody to see this. So <laughs> it was so bad. So with demons within. How do you feel yeah. about Jeff taking over, like in the same oh, kind of aspects? I, yeah, I love his energy, and I I love that he, you know, from the moment. It's so funny because I during my master's class that was I chose, you know, to do a possession because there's been so so many possession movies made that I was going to try to do one that was, you know, it's, you know, like. The same thing, but different. You know, how do they say it? You know, now you know, 
tell me the same thing, but do it different. Yeah, 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 yeah. in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I just kind of uh, through my class, I I went through that and I, I created uh, demons within, and then we came to the marketing phase, and I just happened upon Jeff and I marketed it to him, and he liked what he had read and so and now you're he, stuck with a bunch of people from the midwest <laughs> making a movie for you i absolutely love it i love it <laughs> and um we, we both have, have written so if you have input like let us know because even we both written we both directed we both produced and it's uh -huh. it's a beginning to end it's a process to make a it's beautiful a beautiful love child uh, of everyone's <laughs> yeah. imagination well um i actually have a uh uh, in-laws that live in um, Ohio. Oh, so are they coming to see us on the 28th? I my I think my uh, nephew is. He's uh, um, he's in. They all said they all sent, I sent it all to them and told them all That's about awesome. it. So we, we're I super excited that. to go out there this yeah, weekend. Yeah, it's uh, it's about a three-hour drive for us. But uh, Cody and Taylor they locked in some great locations and. I saw some of the locations. And I got, I finally got to put together like my. Uh, my Justice League. We're not going to use Marvel. We're not going to use Marvel references with Roman. We're going to use DC. My Justice League of filmmaking. I, I got to handpick like, you are great at this. You are great at that. And you know what? I get to pick who I want to bring on. So that was cool yeah. for me to, especially as a female a filmmaker in a small town. Like, yeah, I have the power now, boys. <laughs> Listen to me, because you can be a part of my team or you can go home. Yeah. Yeah. And what was really exciting about it is when uh we were doing a, a a class meeting a phone meeting um jeff um had finally decided okay i want to um um option your script so right in the middle of my class um uh i get the email from jeff and i'm reading it and then i i chime in on the phone and i i, I tell everybody um this producer this actor producer he he just emailed me and said he wants to option uh, my script and everybody's of course like yay you know <laughs> congratulations wrong, yeah know? and it was so funny because my the instructor hell he he went from being like this okay you know and then we got to do this too okay this is what you got to do and i swear i felt like he, it got um, real real quick <laughs> yeah he was like just like giving me a, a grocery list of things that i needed to do I was like, okay. All right. Okay. He's like, we'll get back to the class in a second. This is some real world uh, shit well, right think, now. I think lucky for you, like, uh, Jeff is a great guy. Yeah. He's oh, very he's, transparent. He's been, he's been so fair with me. And, and I think, I think Jeff is super transparent and, and from beginning to end, yeah. I know, um, I, I'm super transparent to the point sometimes it annoys people. They're like, whoa, you shouldn't. Have, and I'm like, I just want people to know, like, there might not be something or there might be something. Roman's yeah. kind of the same way. I, I so I think you have a, a very transparent team bringing your That's vision awesome to life. I am too, and and I have been told at times, you know, you really didn't have to say that, or you really didn't have to, you know, explain that, or you know. But you want and, people to know what they're getting. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And it's like I, well, I just I just wanted to make sure that you know people understand what I'm saying or so, doing or writing. So or I'm going to bring this back to this for, for kind of a, to, to, I'm going to put, I'm around. going to put closing on you. Um, okay. you've written other scripts. I have. Yes. If people are interested, uh, how do they get a hold of you? If they want to read some of your stuff to maybe, maybe option out, option out. Um, I do Terry have a, my IMDb uh, page okay. and I have a website that I'm redoing right now because it's so IMDb it's would be great. best but yeah so you're kind of all in the paranormal I, I love that you came on and talked with us writers yep. get very little recognition so it was super great that you came on and we're gonna we're gonna go from oh. this and uh we're gonna talk yeah to we're the, gonna talk to Jeff yeah we're gonna, we're gonna go so talk excited. to Jeff after this yeah, so yeah. thanks for coming on I'm the show. I'm so thankful for to you guys. For, for I mean, just, we do what we can. You know, yep. believing in this in this this project. And I I cannot wait. I, I'll be out there for the filming. I definitely. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. We're excited that yes. you came up with this story so that yeah. we can make it happen. It's all because of you. Yeah. So <laughs> thanks for coming on, and we'll talk to you soon, all right?
All right. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so, Roberta. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. You have a good one. Love you guys. <laughs> Love you too. Bye. Doing this now? Oh. Dead Ink Apparel is a horror influenced, horror um, inspired clothing company, apparel company based out of Ohio. Um, before we go any further, this is not a sponsorship ad. This is not a paid for ad. This is a really good company ran by a really good dude with some badass clothes and amazing original artwork. So get over there, check them out, support those guys. Really, really, really cool stuff. He's been going to the in the horror scene with the conventions and everything for a very long time. If you ever get the opportunity to meet Justin, um, do it. Very, very nice guy. Very cool guy. And he'll love to talk to you. So, get check them out. Dead Ink Apparel. Go. We have a very special guest today. Uh, Jeff Davis. Uh, for all you horror guys out there, you know him as the opening scene in A New Nightmare. Wes Craven's New Nightmare. All you Freddy fans, we have tons of you out there, I'm sure. But even closer to us is Jeff is the director of a film Roman and I will be working on shooting in northern Ohio called Demons Within. So we asked him to come in today and try and chat with us about the movie yeah. and everything he's been up to. I mean, the man has comic books and, and all constantly acting and there's a lot going on. So Jeff, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. <clears throat> So, I mean, what do you want to go into first? Like, I to want to about? know, me personally, <laughs> Demons Within. How'd uh -huh. you meet Roberta and what made you decide that was the script that you wanted to make your directorial debut on? Like, um, I met Roberta, actually, I believe, through LinkedIn, I think. She um, saw that I had a, pro a project in the world. I have a Western that I'm trying to produce, uh, been working on for a while, but it's, you know, it's a higher budget, of course, because of Western. locations and and period piece and, you know, costuming. Um, but it's a passion project of mine. And I've actually, you mentioned earlier about the comic book. The comic book is actually based on the script that uh, we wrote for the Western. So I was doing a little bit of promo stuff on Facebook and LinkedIn and such. And Roberta, being an aspiring writer, um, contacted me and said, would you be interested in reading a script that I have? So she sent me this script called The Demons Within, and I read it. I'm thinking, well, yeah, this is kind of cool. And uh, it had this troubled girl who was lonely and was was depressed, and all her communication was through her cell phone. So the original script was more like it was almost a mashup of Exorcist 1 and Exorcist 2. I could all see right. that after reading all this right. one. Like, I could see that. Yeah, so I, I approached her with, well, let's let's change it up a bit. Let's see if we can't find a way to make it a little different. And and one day I was reading through it, and um, you know, she throws her cell phone. I'm thinking, what if the demons actually were talking to her through the cell phone? So that's how we, you know, I I, I talked. She's like, oh, I love it, I love it. Let's let's work with it. So, I mean, at one point we were talking about, you know, uh, there's a there's a that she. When she's talking to her mom, we realize that her mom had an abortion, and at whoa, one whoa, point, whoa, whoa, you're giving away too much, Jeff. Calm down. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you as a producer on this. I'm gonna stop you on that one. <laughs> well, okay, but it, it, what, it, what, what it was, it, it, it's it, an intense story. It is. It, it changed direction. So, but anyway, so I, I approached her and said, look, let's, let's, let's somehow incorporate the cell phone and modern technology into our. Uh, demonic possession story. So. I think it's great. <laughs> Hasn't really been done yet. And not yet. You see Ouija board, you see tarot cards, it, but as far as like them finding a way to communicate back, it's always been traditional and, and I think cell phones and communication is... That's where we are I've not. That. I've not seen it done yet. Yeah, that's I, hope, I, I, you know, I hope it's effective and I hope it makes people be afraid to answer their cell phone. Um, that's what I, yeah, that would be my goal is that, uh, or look yeah. at Instagram and say, no one hard at this. It must be the demons messing with me. I'm really they popular, but the demons want me to believe I'm not. Think of all the strange texts you get and the phone calls in the middle of the night that you wonder, you know, what it is. Um, I, I, I get them, you know, I get texts and it's like, it was meant for someone else, but how do you know it wasn't meant for you? Right. Uh, yeah. It's like a hook, yeah. like, Hey, are you paying attention? Was that a, was that a misdial? There you yeah, go. Right, I right. think the script is brilliant. Uh, I know when I read it, it has a lot of exorcists. Uh, I, I see a lot of the omen just with the overtone of like the atmosphere of it. Yeah, it's just it's a very 
it starts off as a slow burn and picks up to something that you're like, holy shit, what just happened? Right. Because well, once it, it actually, once it happens, it, it happens. Once the ball's rolling, you can't stop it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's done. Well, and we're working on, and I think we're, we're working on, you know, tweaking it a little bit to make it even more of a slow burn. So it kind of gradually gets to that point where it just like scares the hell out of you. So, um, and, and, and the uh, what really, what really it. drew me to it as well, too, is the first script that you, you mentioned, why, why did I choose it? Um, I think for many reasons, one, because it's so hard to get your first script made, your first film made. So as a director, I looked at this script. I'm like, hmm, it's got a great, intense storyline. But at the same time, there's very limited locations, right. very lim limited on characters. <clears throat> we can shoot it anywhere. That's yeah. going to make you a great <laughs> indie filmmaker. Recognizing <clears throat> that part is yeah. what's going to make it like, great. We can make this. Absolutely. You know, I, I said, make oh, it... you know, I don't have to make I don't have to raise nearly as much money to shoot this film. And what you know, and if it does do what we think it can do and open some doors, um, you know, the next one we can go a little bigger. Yeah, exactly. No, that's a big thing. I think a lot of filmmakers, especially first time going in, they overlook is like, how feasible is this to do? Like, you can't. They shoot, come up with a great story. And you they... can't shoot Tahiti to Alaska <laughs> to to Wisconsin, and it, and it's just you can't do it. Like you got to write with budget in mind. Exactly, <laughs> and tweak well, I, you know, tweak it of, as you go. Yeah, with a reason. Filmmaking books I've ever read was uh, Robert Rodriguez. Okay. Book. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I know the book. Did, did we just become best time. friends? <laughs> like, What's that? I said, did we just become best friends? <laughs> Robert Rodriguez <laughs> is amazing when it comes I, to. Did you read his book? Oh yeah, and I also follow his. I did uh, in high school. I also follow his filmmaking on a budget or filmmaking on no budget because he runs two different blogs out there on okay. on a budget and on no budget. On yeah. a no budget, he updates not nearly as frequent, but it, it right. basically saying that know your locations, know your crew, know your talent, know what you can do within reason. Know your team. Right. Yeah, and then that's that's where you go from. You don't want to start saying I, I need a million dollars, but I'm going to start shooting with only a thousand. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which a lot of filmmakers do. It, it, like everyone has passion projects, well, that, but I, but that's why so many projects don't get finished you know um I, I i wanted to find something that once we really delve into it we should be able to make it happen you know and For sure. and uh i think this is the one i do too um yeah. so you've worked with quite a bit of talent in your your years of acting uh I've been, I've been fortunate yes well okay so he's a big nightmare fan I am. So when I he am. found out the West, the West Craven thing, he freaked out. But for me, and and getting to work with you, Penny Marshall, you, you Penny Marshall directed an episode of A League of Their Own that you you were in. I yes, well she didn't actually. She was there. She didn't direct it. Actually, okay, but she was on set, which is enough. I mean, that's like six degrees yeah. of separation. That's well, proxy. The, what what it was was the show was they were trying to figure out where it was going. It wasn't really a drama. It wasn't really a comedy, and they were having trouble with getting their numbers up. So she came in to bail it out and it didn't work, unfortunately. But um, Ted Bessel, I don't know if you remember Ted Bessel, but he was uh, uh, Marlo Thomas's love interest in that girl. Uh, okay. He was the director of the episode I worked on. Really nice guy. So um, no, it was a great experience. And Penny, so yeah, just get to see Penny come in and try to work her magic and uh, try awesome. to pull it together was just amazing. Cause she's definitely a, she's an icon. A league she, of her own. She, she, Penny Marshall. Is, yeah, she's <laughs> yeah. something that she revolutionized film for women, on, and I don't think she realizes the impact she had for for females in film, right. be it producing, writing, directing, and just the involvement. Like she was on the the frontier of it for television. Right, um, yeah, and it also with the antics as a as a comedic actor. So you know, <laughs> exactly. And her brother, you know, she had a great place to learn. I mean, her brother was amazing. So it was, yeah. So. Can you can you talk to us about working with Wes Craven a little bit then? Yeah, well, I tell you, I, it's going to sound strange. I had just got to L.A. You know that year, um, had never seen the Nightmare on Elm Street movie, believe it or not. Oh. And I got the call to basically. I started out as a photo double stand-in for Freddy Krueger. Okay. So I got there, and I, Wes would say, "Okay, Jeff." You know, they'd have me full on Freddy, and he's like, "Okay, give me that Freddy walk, or give me that hand 
claw sliding up the walls or across the grate in the floor. So when we're so doing re- Demons Within, if we ask you to do that, you're not going to be caught off guard, right? Because we, we might. We might ask you, you to might, do it. You know, I, almost snagged, I almost snagged the claw, actually, but they got it back from me. But there was only two. Oh, of, my oh, God. Oh. That would have been a piece. <laughs> but um, um, what was amazing was what I realized early on as I, I – I'm a, I'm a watcher. I mean, I learn everything by doing yeah, for and sure. What, I, I, you don't learn shit from books, I don't think. So that's my opinion. Uh, actors out there, you know, you can take a million classes, but until you get on in front of a camera and start doing it, you haven't done it. Yep. And uh, hopefully it's the same with directing and producing and everything. But um, so I agree I watched, with it. I think it is for sure. Well, and everything is, yeah. is different in, in learning. Yep. Um, every yeah, every yeah. team you work with, is you're going to have to tweak I, as you go. I, I work. I worked as an electrician and I learned from an electrician, you know, so, and then I, I would go to jobs and there'd be people who had went to school and get their masters in, you know, uh, and whatever contractors, all this stuff. And they would do stuff half ass, you know, yeah. because they, or they couldn't, couldn't figure their mind wouldn't work in such a way to figure things out because all they knew was what it said in the book. Well, I'm, I look at things it was, about uh, now. The demons within were stopping. Yeah. Was stopping within this. our technology. <laughs> the de- the demons affected my phone. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Uh, so we were talking about you working with with Wes and how you got started on the new nightmare with him, which is one yeah. of the, I think it's one of the scariest nightmare films. Oh, it's one of my favorites. It, oh. it brought yeah, Freddy well, back Wes, full circle think, on yes. being terrified. Yeah, Wes used that as a vehicle to to try to tie everything up and to to kind of get all of his I think nightmares out there, but. What I was starting to say was that what I learned early on when I started working with them was that West kind of was Freddy Krueger, if that makes sense. Um, I could see it. The way and, he walks, he saunters and just Well, even the build along. that Wes had compared to, to Robert, like they were not far off in like the, the Langley aspect. Oh, they very similar. And I watched that and I realized that, that I think, I don't know, I'm not sure if Robert actually... Um, watched Wes early on and, and copied it, or they just happened to be two of the same. Uh, Maybe they're character. the same person in the Matrix. It was a glitch. <laughs> it could be one they, mimic they, the they, other. <laughs> they were definitely they were definitely very much in sync, which was it was uh, interesting. But well, uh, so I mean, I by the time New Nightmare I, came I, along, I they'd been working movie. a decade together. Well, they had more the first one, and then Dream, or yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, you know, you figure Dream Wes Warriors. had him and Robert. They basically created. Freddy together. That was their dream child in a sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I got that plug. Anyways, I got plug. that plug. I watched as closely as possible and then I just kind of mimic them and um, it's flawless. You can't see. I mean, you don't realize it, but a, a lot of the time in that movie when you don't see um, Freddy's face, it's it's me. So, um, And then because, because I got along well with Wes and uh, everybody on set, Wes... Um, came to me and said, would you be interested in playing the role of the creator? And that's what they originally called the opening scene. Uh, the character who creates the metal hand that uh, yeah. isn't seen in the film, but it's actually in the film within the film. And I said, of course. And that was, I, if I look back, I believe that was my first actual Contract gig. role in an acting role. Yeah. That's a so. way to make a splash. Well, that yeah. that yeah. film redesigned the entire franchise of, of Freddy and gave Wes back his voice of making Freddy scary. Absolutely, it, it, it just it just started the whole ball rolling again, and it was the tenth anniversary, so that was kind of cool of the original. And um, during the shooting, there's an earthquake that takes place in the movie, which was funny because while we were shooting, the big Northridge earthquake happened, the six point six. And, wow. Uh, so that's actually incorporated into the film. That's uh, life. Movie that's art. cool. That's cool as hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's typical Wes Craven, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. Just, and, and like I said, luckily, especially for me, that was, movie. Well, there are very few directors <laughs> right that can do that. Like Wes Craven's done it with an earthquake. Steven Spielberg did it with finding a raptor skeleton while doing Jurassic Park. So there's few directors that are like. <laughs> It, it, make it happen. Make it so. <laughs> things fall into place for certain people. But Absolutely, yes, that's great. But luckily, by being on set for the full shoot, um, I really got to watch Wes work. Um, that would, that that's a treat in itself. Yeah, that, just to be uh, able to yeah. watch how he created. Yeah, yeah. So uh, how he created fear, and uh, you know, the funny thing is, is I recently talked to the DP uh, who did that film and who worked with Wes quite a bit. 
and um, Mark Irwin's his name, and he, if I could afford it, he would do my movie, but he, he said, I just can't do these 12-day uh, shoots anymore. He's, like, in his late 60s, and... yeah. Oh, but man. he's he's still he's still. Let's you know, do a flashpoint and get him back when he's in his thirties because that would be a treat right there. That right. would it would I mean that was originally when I first got this script I I actually contacted him we had, we had talked a little bit recently and and uh, so I contacted I said Mark I got this little horror film I said I'd love to have you help me you know pull off my West Craven and he said you know I just, I just can't do I just can't do those little shoot quick shoots anymore he says just too much too much drain on my system yeah. so. Too- to... <laughs> it is because when it, when they're quick and short and uh, you know I mean the budget for Demons Within is is is, de- is it counts. decent for indie yeah. but at the same time when you're looking at Hollywood standard like it it's balls to the walls yeah but uh, your like smoke said, break bottom, is you take two hits off a cigarette and get back in here and get back to work <laughs> yeah but I I think we can pull it off by shooting it you know where we're shooting it and um. Uh, I think we're going to be able to pull it off on this budget and 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 make it look like it's we a are shooting in film. Van. We're shooting in Van Wert, Ohio. We're going up there to shoot the teaser, so we get a whole tour That's of the town. Sunday. We're going on Sunday. We get I a whole mean, tour yeah. of the town and all the locations that uh, Cody and Taylor have set up for us. So. And you're inviting people out there to come meet you, right? Yeah, the town was really excited about the uh, the concept of a film being shot there. So the youth center opened up. Uh, once we're done filming the teaser, they want us to stop by. And then anything that's signed, um, we're going to do some 8 by 10s of Demons Within. Anything that's signed by the crew, the town can hold on to and bring it back when the cast is up there. But we're also going to put the money into the Demons Within account. Very cool. Uh, I think... Oh. I, Half of it. The other half goes to the teen center since they're hosting it. Right, right. right. But yeah, that's right. awesome. And it's so that the, yeah. the the town itself is super excited oh, to have us out is, there yeah. for for what we're doing. I mean, they gave cool. us access to a, a school, an abandoned school for creepy hallway is there scenes. A church? Cody and I are building the church. Cody and I are going to surprise you guys with the church. Wait till you see the church because we already have blueprint and schematic, and I've been working on stained glass windows. So you're going to have a full cool. Catholic church. Heck yeah. For for under five hundred bucks, because he's been yep. he's he has pews even. <laughs> like, That's awesome. Um, but no, it's coming together great. Um, Good. I'm super excited about it. Horror is my my go to genre for my love. Like I love horror. I have not made a lot of horror <coughs> films, but I love horror. I appreciate horror. I think there's a lot that's missed in it. Roman oh, yeah. is a big it, fan it's of where horror. I, it's where it's where I'm rooted in. <laughs> so. Yeah. Nightmare, we, Nightmare was my first uh, horror movie that I watched by myself. Mine, <laughs> the mine was one. They Live. Was it? We don't want to talk about it. You were born in 1992. And I, what was yours? What was yours? Mine was They Live. And who starred in that? John Carpenter. It was Roddy Roddy Piper and Meg Foster. It was 1989. Rowdy, is the, Rowdy. And that's the first movie I ever watched by myself. Do you know Do you know who his, his DP used to be? John Carpenter? Yeah. Who, on what, on what? Early on, like, The Fly. That was John Carpenter, right? No, that was, uh... Oh, no, that was Cronenberg. That was Cronenberg, yeah, because he did, yeah. Carpenter was Halloween, They Live, The Fog. Well, Mark Mark Irwin, who I was trying to get for this, was also Cronenberg's uh, go-to guy when he started I would have died over working with anyone that worked with Cronenberg. Rabbit is one of the best zombie infectious movies I've ever seen and the, the Solska sisters just picked it up and I'm excited to see what they do with that. Cool. Um, but The Fly is great. Yeah, Cronenberg is a great one for me. Scott is a yeah. big... I love Ridley Scott. Yeah. Um, which his DP just... or No, I'm sorry, his editor for uh, Blade Runner and the first Alien mm-hmm. just passed. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, we're, we're losing a lot of this, the great... All this team. great talent. Wes well, is gone. But here's the thing. We're losing it, but we're at a, right now, at least they're getting recognition. Because I can't say 15 years ago an editor of a film would have been recognized. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So at least, there's, at least there's a level of recognition now where you're like, holy <coughs> shit, this guy edited it an this. Author. And, you know, same with, like, stuntmen. So at least yeah. now we're in a general, you know, we're where they get recognized. Because a lot of behind the scenes stuff never got recognized you had your it's writer true. your director the, your composer and the that stunts was get beat up just uh, just for you to have that shot yeah and not even not even winked at for it yeah, yeah <laughs> there, some there's people that actually die while they're yeah there. just trying I to was, get a shot for somebody else to make somebody yeah, else was, look good and then i, not was, even get I was working on a film one night late at night and our 
we had it was with Halle Berry and her stunt double got a phone call. Wait, you worked with a, Halle Berry? Yeah. It yeah. wasn't in Monster, right? No, it was in. Uh, and I, I'm not gonna go wasn't... any. I'm not gonna go any further because my wife will watch this. But I was just <laughs> wondering because if, if so, we'll talk it later. A, it, was in a, it was in a movie called Rich Man's Wife, and she was just amazing. But her stunt double in that movie got called away late at night to go to Wes Craven's um, Vampire in Brooklyn because. Angela Bassett's stunt double died doing a stunt, and this Whoa. woman had to go in and do the stunt after this other woman died. So it was crazy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. I never knew no, that about Vampire no. in Brooklyn, and I love no that film. I thought that was a great, a, a great <coughs> parody of, of vampire films. Like it yeah. was. Yeah. So anyway. The quickest way right, to yeah. a man's heart's through his stomach. No, it's through his rib cage. <laughs> <laughs> so we've talked about some talent, mm -hmm. and. Yeah. Uh, you're the director. You're you're running this whole show, but we're gonna give you an opportunity. You wanna you wanna talk about maybe some talent that it might be possibly coming in on Demons Within? Yeah, is there anything you can and if talk you, about? And if you say I, no, I, we'll let you drop it. But I, I guess we can talk about them. I mean, we have letters of intent from. Say we'll let you lead the conversation. <laughs> you you on lead that, it, <laughs> but we but we want to be able to drop the. We want to be the the first ones to drop it if you drop it. Well, we've got a letter of intent from Linnea Quigley. Fantastic. Yes, I, and, she's she's great. She's and a letter of intent from uh, one Bill Mosley. Right off Rob Zombie's three. So whether yeah, whether three whether we can close the deal or not, I can't. Yeah, until can't confirm, get, but we have letters. Well, of until intent. we're funded, until we're funded, but right now they're they're both interested in, and to go with them, um, we have someone else who's very interested that we're trying to incorporate. A man by the name of Kane Hodder, uh, Jason uh, himself. Like that Kane is Kane's Victor a beast. Crowley. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I think about Adam Green when I think of Kane. Like yeah. him working with Adam Green was some of his well, best. Adam Green's hatchet's what made me want to make movies. So Adam in Green essence, is, Kane is yeah. part of what he, made me want to make movies. And Linnea Quigley, for me, like growing up a kid of the '80s, seeing her as the the super hyper active sexual, like just. Not the demons, Return of the Living Dead, like, and the fact that she's now where she's at, she owns that and yeah, plays on does. it. And she's like, "I'm still a horror queen. I might be older, but I still got this shit. Like, bring yep. it to me." Bill Mosley is just a legend in himself. Uh, but Bill, yeah, Bill is <laughs> Bill. I, I just, I just thought if we could bring those guys in, it's gonna add. Uh... Some horror credibility as well oh, as the, for the sure. talent that we bring in. Uh, those guys, you probably could have got horror credibility with one, but the fact that you have three that are interested. Three of them? That, that's that's I, great. I, I think I think we've got a good shot at nailing all three. So, um, hopefully, hopefully, uh, yeah. And then we've got a, a really amazing actress who's interested in playing the lead, but I'm not going to talk about that. You're not. But <laughs> we will say, if she gets cast, you will not believe her actual age. <laughs> <laughs> you also, but also we the can ability say that, that comes, the ability that comes along with that age. Oh, is the amazing. yeah. It's Amazing. it's phenomenal. Yeah, she's she's definitely yeah, uh, in the league of pro. But I think yeah. we're missing uh, the fact that we have Jeff Davis, who is not only directing but will be playing the the father of the lead. I will be I will be showing up in a few scenes. Yes, actor <laughs> director extraordinaire. Okay. Yeah, you gotta so, have your cameos. You gotta have. It, them. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's well, it's a little more than a cameo. It's a pretty well, good good star role, so. as it should be. <laughs> as it should be. You guys will get your cameos. I don't want a cameo. I don't like being on camera. <laughs> she already hates this part. Yeah, this part. I'm like, oh, dude, I look like I, have, I look like Ed Grimley right now with my hair. Like it's not growing out yet. What's going on? Yeah, uh, I don't. I, I can't see you that well. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't really see. Good. You. Leave it. Leave it that way. Your hopefully, hopefully, still hopefully, on, right? Hopefully, everyone that watches doesn't have glasses on. <laughs> I know. Uh, like chances are, in six oh five, like we're super. We're excited to work together. And then when this got thrown into the mix for us to be able to, like, okay, let's take. Your yep. strength and our strength, and let's put them together to give him and ultimate then, strength from this area. Like and we just wrapped on a short film together, so and we've been we've, editing, and it. it, it so I now think, we've got that collaboration process done, figured yeah. out. I think we're gonna give you a teaser that you're gonna you say, "Holy shit!" Yeah, well, you know, hopefully that'll help. You know, we're, we're getting we're in the middle of uh, raising the financing at the moment, so hopefully every little thing we can do will help. And uh, no, absolutely. Where can, we can um. Where can people, just so we make sure we get it, where can people find all the information for Demons Within and um, follow it right, and support it? Right now, Facebook is probably your best bet. Uh, we do have a uh, Demon Within one on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, and then um, 
on Facebook, it's uh, the Demons Within uh, page, and that's where we're posting everything, so you can keep it. We're going to do anybody out there that's interested in uh, doing extra work and acting, and uh, we're going to be yeah, posting everything. Yeah, you're still going to have some roles that you're <coughs> casting for. We we want to cast as many roles as we can locally, so um, anybody out there that's watching that's local to the area. Banmore, uh, Ohio. So it's about three hours from Cincinnati. So is that near? North. Is that closer? So is that closer to like? It's Columbus, like or? it's like right across from Fort Wayne. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so hopefully we can pull some locals in that are interested in uh, working on a, a Hollywood feature. You know, we're going to make it as much Hollywood as we can, but uh, with a small town feel. So Heck yeah, I, yeah. I think uh, I think between what you're envisioning and then kind of what we know what and everything. Can bring together. Uh, get on board with the dp and everything i think you're gonna get a, a nice like uh i want i want people to watch it and say holy shit did james wan do that yeah <laughs> there you go. That, I, that, that's a yeah. great that's what that's i want them to be mine. like dude that is if if, if we better yet they're gonna look at that and go shit jeff davis did that yeah there like, you go. well i i just i just want it to look like like we spent you know two million dollars oh easy and uh, I think we can do that. And people are going to, they're not going to look at it as a low budget independent film. They just, no. gonna, it's, hopefully it'll stand on its own as a, as a classic it's a film. film. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Oh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you all. So. Yeah. On this end, we put together a hell of a team. Oh yeah. And then um, once and then we, the, the team that you're assembling right now. And then right what now. you got. And then once we get on casting and stuff, I think, yeah. uh, I think people are going to be shocked. And. And, and ready and excited. Yeah, it, it's it's unlike anything that's been done in, in Supernatural Realm before. So it, it'll be new. It'll be refreshing. Jeff, I, I, you have two minutes. Plug your comic book. <laughs> my comic book. My comic you got two book minutes. Called, plug it. Cause that, that's, I've had people ask about. So I don't know about this comic book. It's hanging. It's hanging in my kitchen. Pitch it to Roman. Restitution: The Legend of Cordell Pierce is. Uh, it's based on a script that myself and Jake Stoutler wrote called Restitution: The Legend of Cordell Pierce, and it's about an ex-bounty hunter who's Native American wife and son get killed in a massacre, and once uh, this young uh, doctor, she she heals him as his com old uh, partner comes to help him, and they track down the bad guys, and one by one they uh, they seek revenge. But then there's a little twist in the end where it turns out that there was someone behind the whole thing. Uh, surprise all twist strings. at the end. So um, right now we got. Number one, comic book number one out. It's We broke the script into three comic books. Number two, we just finished the art, artwork. Are you uh, that using the same artist too. with the watercolor? Yeah, oh, he's amazing. Krisu Audi, uh, his name is, uh, yeah. His, his, uh, yeah, that Instagram. artwork is phenomenal. Yeah, it, yeah he's, it's he's, he's amazing. Comic book. He's That's amazing. so cool. Yeah, so, yeah, check it out. If you go to, Mine's you can frame. go also. You can't rest, steal mine. Rest, Mine's frame. Steal the frame. <laughs> Restitution, The Legend of Cordell Pierce, to so go to Facebook. Or you can go to jfdavisactor.com, and I've got everything there. That's my website. So and they can get um, it, and they can order a copy through there. You can order a copy through there. Awesome. Uh, actually, we'll try link to, it. actually, if you want a copy, order it direct through me because right now I haven't figured out how to. Uh, it, it keeps jacking up the uh, shipping. Welcome on the me, social media. Yeah. It's the demons within trying to stop you. <laughs> the from, internet for from... you. It's it. It's it. So. So let's end it on. Let's talk a little. Her name was Joe, because I know you've been you've been working on that, and let's we'll end on that. That's a oh a, a girl that's named a kind Joe. That's a, a more of a family show, and it's it's a very much of a family show. So it's we'll a end on show, uplifting. <laughs> what's that? We'll end with the Upl uplifting aspect Upl of yeah, what's going on. Well, a, a girl named Joe. You can find that on uh, YouTube. It's actually exclusively on the Brat Channel on YouTube. Doesn't cost a penny. Uh, wholesome. Good old fashioned. Takes place in 1960s. Um, I play Joe's dad. Uh, we just finished wrapping uh, season three. Um, seasons are small. I mean, it's it's a, it's got its own little genre. So it's a you know eight eight or nine episodes to a season. I mean, Still, I mean there, there's some big shows. I mean, there's you shows get like ten or twelve, and that's it. Netflix only yeah. does twelve episodes. Yeah, it's, it's, seasons it's kind now. of a Netflix, and HBO started it years ago with a lot of their shows. So it's a limited run series. But if you go to my website, also jfdavisactor.com. I've got links to the first two seasons there if you want to go watch one. So yeah, and we'll and we'll we'll link it yeah, for we'll sure link on the everything. show. Cool. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that you're before we go into full production on Demons Within? Is there anything you're? I know you've been shooting westerns and crazy shit. In yeah, Texas I just and... I just got back from uh, I just got back from San Antonio area. 
uh, shooting a really cool Western where I play a, a preacher with a gun, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. So thank God our, our director is going to be a known preacher going into to go. to directing a film about demons. So at least we're yep. safe. I've got some credibility. And then um, I, I think I'm going back to Austin. Um, I've got the lead in an action film down there uh, in June, I believe. So one of the leads. Congrats. So, nice summer uh, it's gig kind of a, in Texas. Kind of a taken type thing where uh, my daughter gets kidnapped and I pull a couple of friends in to help me uh, – infiltrate this biker gang and get my daughter back. Can you see, oh, like, yeah. just his, like, his persona, I can see that. Hell yeah. yeah. That's um, awesome. Don't freak out. Me. Don't freak What's out that? if on set we ask you to sign something from Nightmare, New Nightmare, because uh, <laughs> yeah. even though we're, even though we're helping produce this, everyone has, everyone, everyone's a fanboy. That's right. And, uh, it's one of my favorite Freddy films. Oh yeah, for sure. I know when I first met you, I, I tried to play it cool, but, you know, I still kind of freaked out. You signed a, a yeah, Freddie some... Freddy painting for me, and that was, like, one of those moments in my life. I'm like, and then we that raised was... almost $300 for St. Jude's Children's Hospital with that painting after That's you very signed cool. it. And I was like, very cool. dude, yeah. I met someone that I looked up to. He signed something I did, which is like a sign-off, and then we raised money for kids. So uh, that's, a good, that's a good day. Well, you also got, we also got some nice shots of you in my uh, Nightmare on Elm Street crew jacket. I got to wear the crew jacket. So did Aaron. I will bring it to Ohio so everyone can get a oh chance. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's uh, it's the most amazing piece I, I have. And there so you cool. go. You can just charge ten dollars a photo for that, and that'll finance your film. Like you'd be you shocked go. what people would pay to wear that. Yeah, just go hang out at conventions and you'll raise yeah. all kinds of money. I I've never seen another one since the movie. I don't know what people did with theirs, but there was probably only, you know, there was just a it was a crew jacket for, and it's a tenth anniversary. It uh, has a nice embroidered Freddy in the back. Wow, pretty cool. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff, I want to yes. thank you. Yeah, I thank you so much for being on the show with uh, me and Stephanie I'm today. glad you got to meet Roman on this Space way. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to, to getting out there and working with you all. And hopefully, you know, once we get the, some of the money raised, we'll get out there ahead of time to do some you know more scouting and For sure. And We're excited to get this and, teaser shot this yeah. uh, weekend and get some stuff edited and sent over. And Yeah, we'll be sending be stuff there. your way so you can check out what, what we're capable of and what we do. Yeah. That sounds cool. Good. All right, man. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Jeff, and we'll talk soon, all right? Thanks, Jeff. Don't, hey, hey, keep your air on when you're in the uh, car. <laughs> hey, North, Northwest Ohio, here we come, right? That's hey, right. That's right. Van Wert, we're coming at you hard. Get, Perfect. Get. Thanks, guys. All right. See ya. See ya.